Hey guys, Haley Lane, aka Key Black here, and welcome back to another episode of Off the Cuff. Uh, I actually had a different episode originally planned for today, but I was kind of going like, man, I wish I had a Halloween themed episode, and then before I knew it, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie release date snuck up on me because I hadn't really been paying attention to it. But I mentioned before I was kind of interested in it when it was announced, I just never really saw myself going on opening night until a certain tweet by Akira the Dawn came out giving it a positively glowing review. Akira is one of those people whose tastes I trust implicitly and so seeing him say it was good I was like, all right, <laughs> when are the show times? So this is the morning after I went to go see it on opening night last night. I'm recording this now on the 28th, of course. And guys, holy crap. <laughs> I haven't had that much fun watching a movie in theaters in a long time. Granted, I've only seen like a handful of movies in the last couple of years. Not a whole lot's been really catching my interest, but dudes, Five Nights at Freddy's was so good. Fair warning that there are gonna be spoilers in this discussion because y you know. <laughs> I can't talk about the movie without spoiling it. So if you haven't had the pleasure of seeing it yet, go ahead and hit pause on this video. You can come back later and uh, then I can gush at you about it. <laughs> you know, going into it, I wasn't really sure what to expect because the, as far as I understand, the Five Nights at Freddy's lore in the games has gotten crazy convoluted over the years. I, I don't follow it anymore. I, I know basically the baseline of it and I know certain details that have come up in games and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I liked how the movie handled it. It like it really simplified it and kind of crushed it down to the bare bones. This is what you need to know, and here's the gist of the storyline, which I think it really benefited from, and I'm really happy about because then it's a lot less for me to keep track of. <laughs> Personally, I really liked the decision to change Vanessa into being Afton's daughter instead of just you know some random worker who got kind of roped into it via the VR thing. I'm still not entirely clear on that in the games, but well, it did surprise me. It, it, it felt good. I was like, yes, okay, that makes sense. And of course that came with the change of uh, Mike Schmidt, AKA Mike Afton, just being changed to Mike Schmidt. So now it's like, okay, we removed him from, from the William Afton family line. And now he's got his own also equally perfectly believable reason for going after the purple guy. You know, I don't know my actors very well, so I didn't really know who Josh Hutcherson was before this. I didn't realize he also played in the Hunger Games, but uh, very attractive. <laughs> I appreciate that. But also he sold the role really well as the older brother to, to Abby. Is like, ah, this, I, I, I can recognize a sibling relationship. This actually felt really natural. Matthew Lillard, of course, was incredible. He scared the bejesus out of me when he came out in the full spring trap suit, or I guess it's spring bonnie suit at the time. I'm technically not spring trap until it happens. And it did. I was I was so happy to see that happen on screen. It's like they they the mad lads, they did it. I mean, on the one hand, I can't imagine them doing a Five Nights at Freddy's movie featuring the purple guy as the villain in that movie without addressing the spring lock scene, but it's like Oh, <laughs> it was so satisfying and the crowd just erupted with cheers when it happened. And like, speaking of the crowd, it's also been a long time since I've been in such a reactive and responsive crowd to a movie. Like the fans really came out for this. People were cheering as soon as Matt Pat showed up on screen. Same thing with Corey Kenshin. There were a couple of, oh my God, that's Sparky the dog in the audience. You know, pretty much anytime there was a fan reference or a fan theory or like a, you know, something like that that appeared in the movie, people just were like, oh my God. <laughs> I want to say like half the theater stuck around to sing along with the credits. <laughs> The atmosphere across the theater was just positively electric. There were so many people there dressed in cosplay and things. The movie theater, I went to an AMC theater and they had people, I guess, who worked there who had made their own home costumes like mascot suit style. There was a chica with a prop, you know, a cupcake and somebody had done the purple guy. They were taking photos of people as they were coming in. I hadn't even thought about it. I had like pre-ordered a pizza to pick up when I got there and the pizza came in a Five Nights at Freddy's themed pizza box. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. What really got me the most about it is that despite being a horror movie, it was somehow, I would call it a family friendly horror movie. I think it was a really smart decision to make it so tasteful. Like there wasn't a lot of gore at all. Like there's certainly implied gore and what happens in the movie, you know, given what happens in the games, you're not gonna get around the fact that some pretty horrific things happen at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. But, and I'm also biased in this sense because I don't really like gory stuff, but I really appreciated the fact that it tastefully cut away and left a lot to the imagination, especially considering like, I think it's a pretty smart decision considering 
wondering how many people in the fandom are children? Something else that my buddy Andrew, you guys heard him on a previous Off the Cuff talking about Skyrim, pointed out last night. I had, hadn't even realized it while watching it because everything just felt so natural, but I guess there wasn't much CGI used in this movie. I had seen a little featurette by another YouTuber talking about how, uh, I, I guess he went to go meet the animatronics in person to see what props were going to be used in the film, but the animatronics are seriously impressive. Like, I'm not going to pretend to know a whole lot about the stuff behind the scenes of this movie, how it was produced, you know, what the effects actually were and everything, but I'm thinking back and it really did seem like it was mostly practical effects, which is really seriously impressive, because on top of that, you've got this teeny tiny budget movie based on a franchise that started originally as a total indie project made by one guy. And I've talked about how much I like Cawthon's origin story for Five Nights at Freddy's before. It is so heartening to see how far it's come and how faithful it was to Cawthon's original vision, and that it's doing as well as it is. So my closing two cents on the Five Nights at Freddy's movie are that it's really good. Y'all should definitely go see it. If you're even remotely interested, go watch it. You're going to have a blast. And also, bravo Scott Cawthon and team and everybody involved with this movie. This is fantastic, and I'm, I'm very tempted to go see it again myself. <laughs> So guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Thanks so much for listening and for watching. Happy Halloween to everybody, and I will see you in the next Off the Cuff. Thanks again.